Hola, mijos. How are you? I hope you had a good day. My day was fun, exciting, long, and I got some good workouts in. <laughs> I have another story for you tonight. This one's called The Prancing Peacock. What do you think's going on there? Hmm? That looks like an angry king duck up there. Let's find out. Relax. Be very still and listen. Listen carefully to this tale about a handsome but vain peacock. He lived high up in rocky mountainous country where the white fluffy clouds played in the blue sky over the kingdom of the birds. One afternoon, as the peacock was admiring his reflection in a rock pool, he overheard something very interesting in the chatter of a family of robins. What could it be? Let's see if we can find out. Now, on this particular day, Mrs. Robin could scarcely contain her excitement. What a great occasion, she twittered to her husband as she hopped about. Indeed, indeed, agreed Mr. Robin. Why, what's happening today, chirped little Robin with great curiosity. Well, my darling, she exclaimed, today our king, his majesty, White Swan the Great, is going to give the hand of his beautiful daughter, Princess Sainietta, in marriage. Who is she going to marry? asked little Robin. Well, that's the thing. We don't know yet, said Mr. Robin. You see, continued Mrs. Robin, many years ago, the king granted Princess Sinietta a special birthday wish, and she asked to be able to pick her own husband when she was ready to marry. So the king called all the eligible birds from near and far to meet this, to meet this evening below the rocky plateau. Today is the day when she will make her choice. Let's hurry. If we arrive early, we will get a good view. So away the three of them flew. All this time, the vain beacock had been listening to the robin's conversation. Well, well, he muttered to himself as he turned to gaze, again to gaze admiring at his reflection in the rock pool. Princess Sin Sinietta is choosing a husband, is she? This might be her lucky day. After all, I'm young, handsome, and single. I'm really quite a catch. And it just so happens, he continued looking at his reflection, that I'm free this evening. I think I might take a stroll toward the rocky plateau. The peacock turned to go, but then stopped to check his appearance one last time. Extremely pleased with his reflection in the pool, he pranced off. Below the rocky plateau, birds were flying in from all directions, chirping and squawking excitedly as they did so. A large and feathery crowd soon gathered, full of long-legged flamingo, rainbow-colored parrots, exotic birds of paradise, wise, dignified owls, shimmering hum hummingbirds, and many more. Suddenly, King... King White Swan and Princess Sinietta appeared on the ledge, and the princess started to look around at the grand gathering of birds. A ripple of excitement went through the crowd as her gaze swept over them, and all the young male birds jostled for space to show themselves off. The proud peacock jumped in, up onto a small rock and opened his beautiful tail feathers, which glistened and shone in the evening light. Then, then the king raised his regal head and opened his great wings. A hush fell over all the birds. Daughter, my finest subjects stand gathered before us. Are you now ready to choose your husband, he asked. The young princess nodded. She had seen the most dazzling bird below and had fallen in love. That bird over there, father, on that rock. I wish to marry the peacock. The other young male birds in the crowd sighed with disappointment at first, but they soon cheered the peacock on his good fortune. He puffed out his chest with pride. Of course, he said sm smugly, I knew I'd be chosen. After all, I am the most handsome bird of all. 
Hearing his boastful words, the other birds began to whisper to one another, What a shame he's so vain, poor Princess Signora. But the peacock was soaking up all the attention and ignored their comments. He found out his beautiful tail feathers and bowed to the crowd. Then he lifted his head up high to show off his strong blue chest. The more everyone admired him, the more he leaned back until, oh dear, he leaned back so far that he lost his balance and fell clumsily backward. The peacock landed on his back with a big thump and an equally loud, ouch, how embarrassing. For a moment there was stunned silence. But once the bird saw that he hadn't hurt himself, everyone burst out laughing. What a sorry sight. The peacock leg, peacock's legs were stuck up in the air, and his gorgeous tail feathers were all covered in mud. His head spun for a minute, but he quickly pulled himself together, puffing up his chest and fanning out his muddy tail. But when he heard the birds laughing, he shouted, How dare you laugh at me, you commoners! I demand that you show respect to Prince Peacock. When King White Swan saw the peacock's antics and heard his proud words, he was very angry to see his daughter's chosen husband acting so inappropriately. Peacock, you are a vain and silly fool, he proclaimed. Your behavior today shows that you are not worthy to be my daughter's husband or become a prince. I will not permit it. Having been scolded in public, the peacock realized he'd lost his beautiful bride for good and hung his head in shame. And Senyeta saw she'd had a lucky escape and asked her father to help her choose a new husband. While the other birds waited excitedly to see who would be the new choice, the disgraced peacock slunk away, muttering that he'd never been so he would never be so vain and silly again. Today's moral, sometimes it is tempting to show off to others and brag about our special qualities, abilities, and achievements. A wise person is confident, yet modest about their best traits and talents. That sounds like good, good uh, wise words, I do think. I hope you enjoyed the story. And I love you so much, and I hope you sleep well, and I can't wait to see you guys again, and I hope we talk on the phone real soon. Love you. Bye.